Hello Cyberspace, my name is Garrett Mills and welcome to episode 8 in my PHP development tutorial series. In this episode we're going to take a look at um, a new sort of feature in PHP that we haven't looked at before and that is file uploads. So in this episode we're going to look at creating a basic form where users can upload an image that is limited in size and it will be stored on our server and it, we will be able to access it and serve it back to them. So we're going to look at creating a form to upload the image and then the processing to verify that it is in fact an image and verify that it's not too large to store on the server. If you haven't, I would recommend checking out... If you haven't, I would recommend starting at the beginning of this series where we cover a lot of the foundation um, topics that build up to this point. But if you've done all that, then let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and build this in the same folder as the project that we've just sort of been working on. But we're going to go ahead and create a new subfolder for it. So I've got my um, PHP Storm development environment open here. And inside this PHP tutorial folder that we've got going, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to name it IMG or something. So this is the folder where all of the files for our image upload um, project are going to be. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is create the actual upload form. So I'm going to create a new PHP file and we'll just name this index.php. Now in here, we're going to need just some basic HTML boilerplate. So All right, so once we've got that done, we just need an upload form. So we're going to create a new form. And inside the action tag, we're going to put the um, name of the script or the name of the page where we want it to put this information at. And so we're just going to have a page called save.php. And then we want it to use the post method. Oops. The post method. And then something that we need to change on that is specific to file upload forms is we need to define the encryption type so ENC type and then you want multi-part slash form data this is going to tell the browser that it's okay to send the file with this form it's okay to um, submit the entire file instead of trying to break it down or just flat up refusing to save the file so inside this form um, we need a new input tag and this input tag is going to be of type file so this is going to be that familiar click to choose file and so we want to name it image upload and then give it an ID image upload required so this is going to be a file type input with the name image upload and then we're going to have a submit button. So this is going to just be a simple form where we've got an upload button and a choose file button and then when we submit the form it's going to post the results to the save.php file which we haven't created yet. So we can check this by switching over to our browser and navigating to our PHP tutorial slash IMG. And here we go. So see we get our browse button that would let us go pick an image. And then we have our upload button. So now that we've got our upload form done, the next thing that we're going to want to do is create the directory where we're going to save the images. So we need a directory on our server where PHP can store the images once they're uploaded. So inside this image folder, I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to name it store. And so this is where we're going to have our application save the images. So when I upload my profile picture or whatever, it gets saved into the store folder. Now the next thing we need to do is create this save.php file that's going to be in charge of actually uploading and saving the image. So we're going to create a new PHP file, name it save, and we're ready to get started. So in here, there are a few variables that it might be useful to define off the bat. So one is going to be the, the directory that we're saving it to, and this is relative to where the file is. 
So this is the store folder. So I say relative to where the file is. This saved.php file is being executed from inside this IMG folder. So to access store, all we need is the word store because we're already inside the IMG folder. The next thing we need to do is actually get the uploaded file. So we're going to have the file and this is going to extend the directory. So we're telling it where we're going to put it. Dot, and then we're going to use a function called base name. Now base name is going to get the root stored name of this file. So when we upload a file uh, to PHP using this method, we call the base name function. It's going to just get the name of whatever file is uploaded with the extension. It won't have any of the frills of like having the an array that has like the size of the file, the MIME type, everything. It's literally just the name. So this is the base name. And then in here, is where we need to actually access the file. So post data, if you re remember, is stored in the super global post. Well, uploaded files are stored in the super global files. So dollar sign underscore files, and then the name of the file, we named this image upload. So this was the um, name of the file input from this page and then we need to get the name of the file so name so uploaded files all have an array of information sent with them so if we want to look at that we can use var dump and we'll just kind of look at this so if I go here and I upload just a picture. You see we get this array. So this is this files image upload array. So it gives us the name of the file, the type, so image slash JPEG, the temporary name, so this is where it would be saved on the computer locally. So this is like where it's temporarily stored on the server. So when you upload it, it's stored in a temporary file until the server decides to save it permanently. So this is that temporary file. If there is an error with the file, it would go here. And then the size of the file in kilobytes. So we want just the name. So that's why we call name. So the next thing that we want to do is make sure that the image that we're saving to the server is actually an image. Because as it stands right now, I could upload any kind of file, even like a text file or some kind of malicious script to the server, and it wouldn't know any better. It would just save it because it's just getting a raw file. So we need to write logic to check that it is actually, um, it is actually an image. So PHP use, has a helper function built in that we can use to sort of verify that it is an image. So we're going to have, we're going to do this by getting the size of the image. So the helper function that we're going to use is get image size. And then we want to run this on the temporary file, this temporary file where it's stored here, because this is still the image file. It's just saved temporarily. So we're going to call this on files, image upload, and then the temporary file. So what this is going to do is it's going to try and get the size of this file that we've uploaded and it's going to assume that it's an image. And so we can use this get image size to check if it's an image because if it's not an image, then this get image size function is going to return false. So if size is false, then we don't want to allow this image to be saved because it's not an image. We don't want this file to be saved if it's not an image. So if it's not an image, we need to have some sort of trip that tells it to just not save the file. So one kind of useful way of doing this is to keep a running variable. So a running variable in coding is something that's sometimes used if you've got to do multiple checks that don't necessarily come one after each other for a file and so if it fails any one of those checks we shouldn't upload it but they aren't necessarily related to each other where you can say if it does this then go ahead and check for this then go ahead and check for this so what we can do is create another variable up here and call this 
error and set it to false. So when we start out, there's no error. But if at any point we have a problem with the file or there's an error, then we can set error to true and then it, the file won't be uploaded. So if this is set to false, it means it's not an image. So we're going to set error to true. But if it is an image, then we want to go ahead and continue our processing. So I'm going to just label this here. So the next thing that we want to do is give the image a unique name because humans have a tendency to name images and name files predictably. So my profile picture that I'm trying to upload, for example, on my computer it's named mills.jpg. And that's not that uncommon of a name where if someone else tried to upload mills.jpg, my file would get overwritten on the server. So we want a unique way of naming the file so that if it gets if someone else uploads a file that was originally called the same thing, this one doesn't get overwritten. And a very uh, useful way of doing that is with timestamps. So PHP, like all computers, counts in Unix time, which means it keeps a running total of the number of seconds that have elapsed since a given period of time. So the timestamp of any image is never going to be the same. So we want to rename the image to contain the timestamp. So we can go ahead and do that by changing this file name that we're trying to save. So we want to redefine what the file is. So file is the directory where we want to save it. Dot, then we want to get the current timestamp dot and then the base name files. image upload name and then we can put an underscore here just to kind of keep it clean so what this is going to do is it's going to give a unique time identifier to every file that's uploaded in addition to the name so if we want to see what this is going to look like we can var dump it out var dump the name of the file we're trying to save so keep in mind that the file I'm trying to upload is named mills.jpg so if we hit refresh on this page, you see that it's going to save it as the file name, this string underscore mills.jpg. If we refresh it, we see that string changes. So every time this file is uploaded, there's going to be a different timestamp at the beginning. So that makes it extremely unlikely that a file is going to get overwritten unless at the exact same second, two people upload a file with the exact same name and extension type. And that's very unlikely to happen. So we've got the file renamed the next thing that we want to do is make sure that it's not too large so we don't want people to be able to upload like 50 megabyte files to our server because that could potentially open our server up to being spammed and broken intentionally by malicious hackers who are trying to take down our application by uploading some massive file that's going to fill up all the storage on the computer so that it can't be used. So what we want to do is we want to set a max file size. So we can do this by using the size attribute of this files um, entry. So if files image upload size is greater than some size then we don't want to allow it to be uploaded so sizes of files in PHP are measured in bytes so the number of bytes would be what we want to put in here so let's say 500 kilobytes well if we want to figure out what 500 kilobytes is in bytes we take 500 for kilobytes and multiply it by 10,024 that's the number of bytes in a kilobyte and we get 512000. So if it's greater than 512000 bytes, 512,000 bytes, then we don't want to allow them to upload it because it will be greater than 500 kilobytes. So we're going to set error to true. 
And then one thing we can do as we're going along here is we can have an error message. So that way, if, um, if the user tries to upload a file and there is an error, we tell them what the error is, not just that there was an error. So here it would be that the file is not an image. So we're going to set the error message to be file is not an image. Here we can set the error message to be file is greater than 500 kilobytes. So we're just going to label this. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to check the MIME type. So up here we verified that the image, that the file uploaded was an image. But another thing that we can do is check the MIME type for what kind of image it is. So yes, the file is an image, but there are many different kinds of images. So we want to verify that say it's only a JPEG or a PNG that is being uploaded. And those have very distinct things called MIME types. And a MIME type is just a semantic description of what kind of a file it is. And so every uploaded file automatically gets a MIME type. And we can see that if we use the var dump on this files entry. So image upload. So if we go here and we look, we see under the type we have image slash JPEG. And if I were to try and upload a PNG, it would be something else like image slash PNG. And so we can verify that the image is of a certain MIME type that we only want to allow. So we're going to have a new if gate. If files image upload type is not, not equal to image slash JPEG and the uploaded image file type is not equal to image slash PNG. So if it's not a JPEG and it's not a PNG, then we don't want to allow it to be uploaded. So we're going to set error message. We're going to say image must be of type jpeg or png and we're going to set error to true so we're going to say we're going to label this verify image mine type and so once this is done if it passes all of these tests so if it is an image and it fits the mime type and it's not too big to be uploaded to the server and we've assigned it a unique name then we want to go ahead and upload the image. So the first thing that we want to do is if there is an error, well we don't want to upload it. But if there's not an error, then we do want to upload it. So we're going to look at uploading it first. So we're going to use the file move we're going to use the helper function move uploaded file and on the temporary name and then where we want to put it. So we're going to have another if gate. So this is going to be if and this is just going to check if it was successful. So move uploaded file and then the name of the temporary file so that .tmp PHP file where it's temporarily stored the file on the server. So files image upload tmp underscore name and then where we want to save it. So we set the name of where it should be saved up here. So file. So it's going to call this and then we're going to check if it's successful. So if it returns true, if it was successful, then we're going to echo out, um, say, uh, the name of the uploaded file. So echo file. But if it wasn't, then it means that there was some undetermined error. So we don't know what the problem was. It was a server error. So we're going to echo 
undetermined server error when uploading. Because if it gets to this point and it meets all of our criteria, but we can't move it to the directory where we're trying to save it, that's not something the user can fix. That is a server error. So we want to say that there was an undetermined server error when uploading. So if there wasn't an error, we move it to the permanent directory and we echo out the name of the directory. But if there was an error, well, what we want to do is we want to echo out the error. So echo error message. So now we can check it by navigating to our IMG folder. I'm going to go to my desktop and pick, say, just this um, profile picture I have stored. And then I hit upload. Nothing went wrong, so we see we get the URL of where this image is saved. And so if I copy this and I type it in and hit enter, we see the picture got uploaded successfully. This is actually being served from the server. So one last thing that we can do is just make the uploaded page look a little nicer. So instead of just echoing out the name of the file, maybe we echo out something that says, your file has been uploaded and then like a link to it. So maybe we echo just a little bit of HTML. So your file has been uploaded successfully and then say we have a link to it so then here we're going to have the name of the file and then we close the a tag click here so what this is going to do is it's going to print out your file has been uploaded successfully. It's going to open in, in a new link. And what these backslashes do is they tell PHP to ignore the next character. So normally if I didn't have the backslash, PHP would think that I was closing this tag. But that backslash tells it to ignore it. This one closes it, puts in the name of the file, opens it again. And then we close the PHP tag and then we say click here. So say I go back here and I upload the file again. upload. Now it looks kind of nice and it's just a usability thing. So I click here and there's my file. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. As always, I'll be down in comments if you need help with anything or if you want to show off something you built or you just want to connect with me. You can also connect with me via email, via my blog, on Twitter, on Google+, etc. Links to do all that stuff are down in the description. Um, be sure to get subscribed if you're not because we've got more PHP coding tutorials to come as well as other um, different sort of tutorials and technology projects. And as always, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.